If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. There's nothing quite like the 1950s and 1960s when it comes to cars. Um, cars really were displaying their national characteristics in the best way possible. And I can think of few cars that proclaims its Americanness more than this 1961 Chrysler 300G. This is the confident cruiser of the interstate highways. When you hear the term land yacht, this is what you think of. This is a vehicle designed to waft effortlessly across the landscape from one side of the country to the other, five days of incredible driving in a car that can handle it all. And there's a very particular reason why this particular car, the Chrysler 300 and the 300G, is so adept at that purpose. When you think of a big, comfortable American luxury car of the late 1950s or early 60s, there are tons of cues right here in this Chrysler. First of all, they had a wonderful marketing name for everything. The self-adjusting mirror was a mirror-matic. The radio is a golden touch radio. The nickname for the instrument binnacle was the Astrodome because it looked like uh, a celestial globe model. And there are buttons and controls for every one of the power features that this car has. It's got automatically dimming headlights and of course the great Chrysler push button transmission. Wonderful chrome with, with great etching in it and lots of wonderful detail in the interior. But take a closer look. The interior. This is not some bench seated family hauler. There are four individual bucket seats inspired by the great Chrysler Norseman concept car which went down on the Andrea Doria. And a look about this car. This is one of those, I'm a design guy as everybody knows and I love Virgil Exner and the work that he did with Chrysler in the 1950s. And this is the last of the great cars of the forward look. The next year in 1962, the fins would finally be gone, but these fins, which were actually inspired by the designs of Giovanni Savanuzzi, the great Italian designer and aerodynamicist, still have a great presence on this car and lended that wonderful look that just seems to make it speed when it's standing still. But speed is what this car is all about. This may seem like a typical American late 50s, early 60s luxury cruiser, but the Chrysler 300G is a potent performance car. This model made 143 miles per hour on the speed test at Daytona Beach. This is a real performance car, and a performance car in a uniquely American way. The Chrysler 300 letter series are, are legends in the automotive industry, no matter where you are, in the US, in Europe, in Asia. Starting in 1955 with the Chrysler C300, so named for the 300 horsepower that it put out, which became a star on the tracks of NASCAR with very few modifications. The Chrysler Letter Series cars became bigger and heavier as they went through the years, but the Chrysler engineers made sure that they kept pace with the engine development to make sure that these cars could perform as well as their illustrious forebear. And this is a car that almost seems to have two personalities, but again, that's very typically American for the period. The steering is feather light, but as soon as you turn off center a little bit, you begin to feel a little bit of weight in the steering, which is very uncharacteristic for a car of this period but it also feels quite confident. The throttle response, of course, is instantaneous. And you get the impression that this car wants to do things that might seem slightly indecent for a car of this size and style. But this is an amazing car. A Chrysler C300 has long been on my bucket list of cars to own before I stop driving. Now, of course, I don't know if the Chrysler 300G that achieved 143 miles per hour at Daytona was equipped as this one is with air conditioning and all the other 
great comfort features that it has. But when you think of the concept of this car and how beautifully executed it was, as well as the fact that the Chrysler Corporation was sort of also in a mixed point in its history. The company had a reputation for advanced engineering with torsion bar suspensions and hemi head engines, but there was also many quality control issues in some of the Chrysler products in the late 50s that held the company back. But driving this car, it really feels as if not only they got everything together in this car, but this is a car they obviously really cared about. So all the details were right and they were there. Uh, this particular example, quite interestingly enough, carries an autograph on the uh, glove box, that of Richard Petty. Now, Richard Petty did not race Chrysler 300s, but he did race Plymouths quite successfully for the company. And their reemergence on the performance scene in the 1950s went a long way to rescuing the reputation of the company, which had somewhat become tainted after the air flown in the 1930s. It took Chrysler a long time to come back. But this, I think, is a great example of Chrysler demonstrating that they were indeed back. It's hard to think of a car in the General Motors or Ford line that directly competed with this car because I think Chrysler really had a great idea of how to combine the typical comfort that Americans wanted in a big, luxurious car, but with the speed. And again, this is something uniquely American. This car was also available with a manual gearbox, which is extremely rare. This is an automatic version, of course. But again, it speaks to the commitment to performance that Chrysler had with these cars. And it's also quite interesting because some have referred to the letter series Chrysler's as sort of a banker's hot rod. I think that they're a little too extrovert for most bankers of the period. I think that it was more the mature guy's hot rod. So no matter what business you're in, uh, this is the kind of car that you wanted to both be seen in and drive. To find a great example of this car is always a pleasure. And this example from the Audrain collections is one of the nicest uh, in the country. It's solid, there's no rattles in the car, it handles well, it responds very well in the throttle when you push down on that loud pedal. And it's, of course, as I mentioned before, extremely well equipped. This is the kind of car that, for me, combines it all. One of the very interesting things about how car development progresses is the fact that uh, in 1961, many of Detroit's upper end offerings had quad headlights which had recently become legal. And what would become shortly illegal is the gearbox in this car, the torque flight push button transmission, which of course does not have a park. You put this car in neutral and then apply the handbrake to keep the car from rolling away. And that would become illegal in cars that they had to by law have a parking gear. So it's interesting that uh, this is a feature that uh, was included in this car, but uh, wouldn't be in the near future. Also, as I've often observed in other high performance cars with engines which are very torquey from the low end, whether it be a Ferrari 400, a Porsche 928, uh, or any of those great GT cars, while this Chrysler was available with a manual gearbox, I think somehow shifting the gears in this car would have been unseemly. Um, perhaps in a C300, but by the time you get to a Chrysler 300G, it delivers that performance in an effortless way that you don't want shifting gears to get in the way of. And I can't keep saying it, this is a car that provides much better performance than you would think by just looking at it or the immediate first impression. I recently uh, become addicted to watching uh, a certain uh, 19... 60s and late 50s uh, courtroom drama. I'll just say Perry Mason. We're not pushing Perry Mason, but I love watching it because I love watching all the cars in it. It's really a time back, and they drove these cars in a very aggressive manner as well, which again, we don't think of today, that when certain cars, big American cars, were referred to as sporty, we think sporty is an MGTC, but there's a different kind of sporty a uniquely American kind of sporty, and I think that's what this Chrysler is. One of the greatest uh, 
pieces of the Astrodome instrument cluster is the speedometer, of course, which is, forms the back of it, which labeled up to 150 miles per hour. And you think, ha, in a big cruiser like this, 150 miles per hour. But remember, Daytona, 143. So that speedometer actually meant and means business. When they were just puttering around on a country road or opening up the throttle on a wide open highway, this is a car that really satisfies in a way that might be surprising to people who have not driven cars of this period, who may think of them as just these sort of strange, loosey-goosey, wallowing beasts. This is a really neat car to drive, and it's a car I would drive across the country. This is a car made for the interstates, and a land yacht, yes, but a champion land yacht. This is a champion racer land yacht, and I love it. Thank you.